Juneteenth has now been a federally recognized holiday for three years, commemorating the day the slaves in Galveston, Texas were informed of the Emancipation Proclamation and their freedom. Today, Juneteenth is being celebrated all over the country, and we'll take a look at how different places are choosing to spend the holiday. But first, here's a quick recap on the history of Juneteenth. We're inside the Slavery and Freedom exhibit at the National Museum of African American History and Culture. And with me now is museum curator, Mary Elliott. Mary, thank you for being with me. Thank you so much for having me, Victor. Let's talk about the narrative that I think some people expect when we talk about Juneteenth. They think that after June 19th, 1865, that all black people in this country were free. Is that true? That actually is not true. Yeah. In fact, um, Juneteenth is when news got to Galveston, Texas, and it is actually the date when the Emancipation Proclamation was enforced in Texas, which was the rebelling state farthest west. And the Emancipation Proclamation only freed enslaved African Americans in the rebelling states. Mm. That meant that there are states like border states like Maryland, Missouri, Delaware, Kentucky, where there were still people who were enslaved. Some of those states did emancipation around 1864, just before the end of the war, but two did not. And so there were about 200,000 plus people still enslaved at that time. It wasn't until December 6, 1865, when the 13th Amendment was actually ratified. And that is when slavery ended in the nation and we were bought out of the bonds of slavery for this whole country. Miss Opal Lee, known as the grandmother of Juneteenth, says that there should be a season of freedom that June 19th, Juneteenth freed the people, 4th of July, Independence Day freed the land. The context of a, a season of freedom and connecting those two holidays, talk about that if you would. You know, I'm really glad that you asked that because um, thinking about a season and the two holidays, thinking about that time period between the commemoration of both of those days, it's really powerful because even though July 4th comes after June 19th, June 19th gives us an opportunity to reflect on the nation, who we were, who we are, and who we want to be. This is a new federal holiday, although some black people have been celebrating it for many, many years. Um, and for people who want to celebrate and commemorate, because you say that's important too, how do they do it? How do they start? There are many people that Juneteenth is new to them. There are some that they've been celebrating Juneteenth for generations. And the fact is Juneteenth starts in Texas. There are Emancipation Day celebrations all over, including in Washington, D.C. in April, because the enslaved African community was freed in 1862 prior to the Emancipation Proclamation Act. Now that said, a lot of people think it's just celebration, but you're so on point when you say commemoration, mm. because it's a moment, as we said, to reflect. There's a tremendous resource on the museum's website where we help people learn about the history of Juneteenth. We help people see how many people have historically celebrated Juneteenth. We provide a great deal of information. And one thing I want to point out is, if you look through our entire website, there's all types of material all types of information for people to think about and reflect on the meaning of freedom as it is presented in this museum. You have a new, is it okay to call it an acquisition? Yes, we do. Of the slave badges. Yes. What is a slave badge? Slave badges were used um, in Charleston, South Carolina. Oftentimes we hear about African Americans who carried free papers so they could go around and and prove their freedom. In this case, we have enslaved black people who were leased out. Their labor was leased out by their enslaver. Mm. So the enslaver was making money off of these men and women and their skill sets. Um, and so to traverse that landscape in Charleston and have that limited autonomy, the enslaver actually had to register the enslaved workers that he leased out their labor so that they would receive a badge indicating who they were, where they were actually meant to work. Um, and so that's what the slave badges are. It was a form of control, a form of surveillance. Um, it also generated profit for the city. It generated profit for the enslavers. It generated profit for the people who leased the labor. And for African-Americans, 
although it was a form of control and surveillance, it also enabled some of them to actually retain some of the earnings from their work so that they could purchase their own freedom. In addition to that, that limited autonomy allowed them to make contacts with others beyond plantation sites to ex so to expand their communication network. Very, very important in that fight for freedom. Mary, thank you. Thank you. One way to celebrate the holiday, check out your nearest national park and enter for free. The National Park Service is waiving entry fees at all national parks in honor of Juneteenth. This year is the first time it will be a free entry day at U.S. national parks. While entry will be free, fees will remain in effect for parking and activities like camping and fishing. Also, parks operated in partnership with outside parties may charge other fees. If you're not near a national park, no worries. There's plenty of other activities happening across the country. Earlier this month, you may remember, how could you forget, is what I should say. You may you met some amazing women from the Miss Juneteenth Central Texas pageant. Some beautiful young women and some adorable little girls were here yes. as well. Uh, as of Saturday, June 8th, the 2024 Miss Juneteenth court, court is officially crowned. crowned. You guys, <laughs> you can see the Central Texas court right there on your Aww. screens. In the newly crowned 2024 Miss Juneteenth Queen, these incredible young ladies presented their talents, casual wear, formal wear, and oral responses for three different divisions, Little Miss, Junior Miss, and Miss Juneteenth. They shared platforms and topics they're passionate about, including bullying, heart disease awareness, reducing the literacy gap for elementary school students, and so oh. much more. Oh my gosh, certainly living up to their slogan, which is a pageant with a purpose. Congratulations, a big congratulations big to all of the participants, everybody who was a part of that. And thanks again to our friends at Gone Mad uh, for putting this pageant on our radar. Of course, you can always find out more about what they're doing, both Gone Mad Productions and Studios and Ujima Magazine right there at their websites. And a great way to follow them, uh, support them, is by following them on their socials. That's so cool. I love to see that. I it's so love neat to see that. And the little girl, they all look stunning. They are beautiful inside and out. Yeah. When you meet these women, they are just composed so elegantly yes. and are, they well articulate spoken. so yeah. well. <laughs> Yet yeah, everything about them inside and out is just absolutely beautiful. A pageant so with a purpose. Congrats. We love that. In honor of the Juneteenth national holiday tomorrow, the Little Rock Air Force Base hosted a Juneteenth festival today. KATV was there for the celebration at Warfit Pavilion this morning. It included kickball, softball, games, a kid zone, and poetry readings. Daybreak anchor Ryan Houston emceed the event this morning. Also at the event today, Colonel Denny Davies spoke about the true meaning of Juneteenth. It was June 19th, 1865 that we started as, an, as a United States, as an entire country, living up to those ideals from the 1700s. Event organizers went on to say that alongside the celebrations, the true importance of the holiday should not be lost. Well, good morning. By tomorrow morning, the Juneteenth flag will be flying here at the Hamilton County Courthouse. That flag raising ceremony happening later this morning. Now, this is the fourth year that Hamilton County has hosted a flag raising. Commissioner Alicia Reese says Hamilton County was among the first counties in the nation to observe Juneteenth as a holiday. That's before it became a federal holiday in 2021. Commissioner Reese says it's also special for the county as Opal Lee, known as the grandmother of Juneteenth, Juneteenth stopped by on her national walk campaign. Now, Lee went all over the country to garner attention for Juneteenth to be made a nationally observed holiday. Commissioner Reese says, though it's a day of celebration, it's a reminder that work still needs to be done. Juneteenth is about freedom. Uh, it's about uh, equity. It's about inclusion. It's about one set of rules. And so in some regards, we're still fighting for some of those issues um, that we were fighting for when we were trying to get Juneteenth. Juneteenth is the beginning. Um, we have to keep the message going. We've got to keep create the climate of uh, one set of rules, everyone having an equal shot at the American dream. 
Now, county leaders and organizers of the Cincinnati Juneteenth Festival will all be here later this morning. All are invited to attend. Live at the Hamilton County Courthouse, Annie Brown, Local 12 News. And today happens to be Juneteenth. It's a nationally recognized holiday. It marks the end of slavery here in the United States. In 2021, Congress passed legislation making it a federal holiday. President Joe Biden then signed it into law. The Emancipation Proclamation of 1863 freed enslaved people in Confederate states, but did not immediately end slavery in places like Texas that was still under Confederate control. So some two and a half years later, on June 19th of 1865, Union troops led by Major General Gordon Granger arrived to Galveston, Texas and announced to the more than 250,000 enslaved black people in the state that they were free. Let's now check in with our Andrew Nomura, who has more not just on the historical significance of this holiday, but also all the fun stuff planned here locally today. Hi, Andrew. Hey, Kim. Yeah, here at the Water Street Plaza, it's pretty quiet now, but things will be a lot different later on this afternoon when dozens of people come here to celebrate the Juneteenth Festival here in on the, in the Water Street District. Uh, it starts at 6 o'clock this afternoon we have a graphic for you to give you all the details ends at 9 p.m packed with music community and culture and just another great way to celebrate this holiday now tons of cities across the valley have been celebrating juneteenth we had some over the weekend there at the world market center uh, with the city of Las Vegas, Clark County, and in conjunction with North Las Vegas. Additionally, North Las Vegas had a flag raising last week. Check this out. We typically leave the flag up anywhere from six months to a year, um, and it's just a reminder of the suffrage of African Americans back um, in 1865, and we must never forget. It's so important that we keep this history alive and the, the real, true, and understanding the meaning behind the Juneteenth holiday. Well, additionally, Congressman Stephen Horsford here from Nevada will be having a uh, civil rights roundtable with White House advisor Tom Perez talking on things and discussing things, including uh, protecting democracy, criminal justice reform and uh, decreasing the racial wealth gap, not only here in Nevada, but also across the United States. But Juneteenth is just another celebration of uh, some of the uh, African-American accomplishments here in the United States. And uh, it was an, it has been an unofficial a holiday here throughout the United States for over a hundred years uh, in African American communities across the United States. But just like we've been saying, Kim, uh, I officially became a holiday back in 2021. We'll send it back to you. And some people may be hearing about it for the first time, and that's okay too, because knowledge is power and it's now up to all of us to pass the word. Thank you, Andrew. Appreciate it. Juneteenth officially became a federal holiday in 2021. It celebrates June 19th, 1865, when the last enslaved people in Texas found out they were free two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. Well, a lot of people want to celebrate, and today is the day. It is now a federal holiday. There's some festivals going on in our area, Deja Mayfield in Jacksonville, where they have some big doings planned for this afternoon. Deja's here with the details. Brian Mariah, we are downtown Jacksonville at the Riverwalk this morning with Sabrina Johnson, who's been really instrumental in putting this event together. That's going to kick off later this afternoon. When you get here, you're going to see a lot of different vendors that again, Miss Sabrina has kind of put together so that they can get a chance to kind of sell their products and get their name out there. Miss Sabrina, can you tell us a little bit more about some of those businesses that we'll see? So it's one of the businesses that we have is called Glomania, and that's been a staple in our community. She's moved um, locations, but she's been remained solid here, and that's somewhere for the kids to go, have little fun activities, uh, arcade feel. So you're bringing back the nostalgia of, you know, the, the old video game yeah. times. And then we have um, another vendor that's going to be selling T-shirts um, out here, and she's going to have a variety of T-shirts that you could choose from and some with the um, Juneteenth um, celebration on there. We're going to have um, dots 
and she has the um, jewelry. And that's um, she started that business to commemorate her grandmother because her and her grandmother used to make jewelry out of odd things around the home. Mm -hmm. And that's something that she turned into a business. Mm -hmm. And she's she's going to be out here today. We have Painted Tiger, okay. who's owned by um, a local Onslow County principal. Yeah. And she has the African-American type um, artifacts and um, things that she make out of clay and everything. So you'll be seeing a lot of different um, vendors out here. We're also going to have a variety of food trucks. So you're mm -hmm. going to have some barbecue with the retail barbecue. You're mm -hmm. going to have Lorraine's Kitchen. You're going to have Julie's um, Icy Truck mm -hmm. and a couple of others that are, that are going to be out here today. So many different things to see and different vendors to stop by. You have so many different things to shop for when you come here because yes. we're having the Juneteenth celebration again. This kicks off at 3 o'clock downtown Jacksonville at 1 o'clock. You guys are going to start things off with a freedom walk, but yes. just to kind of touch back on why we want to kind of give people who own businesses, black owned people who uh, own those businesses is because the number of black owned businesses in our country, it really failed during the pandemic and people are just trying to have access to capital and to build wealth for them and their families and for their communities. So when you shop black owned or even when you shop small owned, you're giving people right in your community the opportunity to create big opportunities for them and their families. So again, everything kicks off here starting at three o'clock. We have a live entertainment guest who's going to be here at 730 to kind of give you a sneak peek of some of the music that you'll be hearing later on this afternoon once things wrap up. All right, Marty, thank you very much. 744 today marks the Juneteenth holiday. We've told you this morning about what is closed, but it's also important we remember why this holiday is observed. Elder Hanif Abdul Wahid is a local thought leader within the black community. He also has an event planned for next month that we want to talk about as well. Good morning. Thank you so much for coming in. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you for uh, having me, Dad. Absolutely. First and foremost, before we talk about what's happening next month, mm -hmm. let's address the day itself. Why mm -hmm. is marking Juneteenth so important? Well, I, I, I think uh, the history has uh, uh, been kind to us in uh, allowing us to understand that freedom is the most sacred principle. Uh, that any human can aspire for, especially if they don't have it. And so uh, Juneteenth, uh, it commemorates uh, the uh, uh, 1865 uh, uh, rendition of going into uh, Texas, uh, not to inform folks that they were free, but to enforce the law uh, that freedom was uh, the order of the day. And so to remember that, uh, a lot of times that narrative gets uh, somewhat uh, uh, somewhat confused to the degree that uh, uh, folks at that time didn't know that they were free. It was that uh, uh, they weren't allowed uh, to have their freedom. And so troops had to go in to uh, enforce that. And so to remember that uh, uh, is very, very important. And uh, I'm, I must also add that uh, it is important for us, at least here in Rochester, because uh, there's still the uh, vision uh, that most folks have uh, to make Rochester one city instead of two. Absolute 100% right on that. Is that why it is so important that we commemorate the day uh, within the Rochester community? Yes, uh, not, not only uh, commemorating it and celebrating it, uh, but planning to make sure uh, that this freedom is everlasting and that it continues to grow so uh, folks can stand up into, into their uh, dignity. And, and as you just said, it's, a, it's about uniting. It's about coming together rather than the separation of people. Right. Absolutely. Um, I do want to talk about what you have planned uh, because you've got a big event coming up on July 6th. Is it the fourth time you're doing this now? Yes, it's an Independence Day event uh, in the... Um, uh, it's the uh, sacred aim of neighborhood excellence, restoring the lost property of the American people. And uh, this is the fourth uh, time that we're bringing this speaker in, Imam Earl Abdul Malik Muhammad. Uh, he's a Muslim American leader in the tradition of Imam W.D. Muhammad. Uh, this event is going to take place at the Memorial Art Gallery, 500 University Avenue, uh, Saturday, July 6, 2024. And uh, it builds upon um, 
the the basic theme of Juneteenth today is that there's a sacred aim that we have uh, within our neighborhoods, and uh, that is that uh, everyone deserves uh, a safe and prosperous neighborhood, um, uh, functioning schools uh, within the neighborhood, and if that's not the case, then I think everyone has to work uh, from the bottom up and the top down to make that happen. Absolutely. Some hard-hitting, heavy-hitting topics, uh, human rights, dignity, and addressing the soul. Good topics to be talking about. Uh, thank you so much for coming in this morning. Really appreciate your time. If you want to attend next month, we'll post all of this information and much more on our website, foxrochester.com, after the show this morning. 748, we're back. That's right, we're in beautiful Columbia on a beautiful day. Laura, it doesn't get better than this. It sure doesn't. Laura's the booger with the sugar, the head honcho, the top dog, the person in charge. So you, <laughs> you laid this thing out. What can we expect today? You can expect six and a half hours of vendors, artists, uh, musical acts on the stage. Come by, enjoy this beautiful, free family event. I love it. And then speaking of vendors, da da, we have one of our superstar vendors, Roxanne. So Roxanne, what do you have here? I see some. I think body products, I see some amazing. Well, tell us about your, yes. your babies here. Sure, so my skincare line is called Pasión de la Piel, oh. which, <laughs> which is Spanish for skin passion. We oh. do have body oils, body scrubs, and some body oil candles. Here's our rose and hibiscus, nice. which is infused with um, rose petals and different tea. Um, and then we have our body scrub as well. Our body oil candles are, yes, as you heard it, it's used for the body. It smells delicious. Thank you very much. You feel, oh, well, you warm it up and then rub it on? Yes, you do. Wait a so minute nice, now. Nice, warm I got some creative oil. ideas now. Wait a minute, Allison. <laughs> hey. So, yes, yes. <laughs> you're one of many vendors here. And again, you know, the food's going to be amazing and a beautiful day as we celebrate Juneteenth, guys. You know, and it's in Colombia. I mean, come on, Colombia is always, you know, mm -hmm. great place to be. You know, even just the energy, like people running, running around the lake this morning. So this is a great day. And hey, it's a federal holiday for those who don't know. Juneteenth is now a federal holiday. And we see, Mark, a lot of tents, it looks like, setting up and getting ready for today. Yeah, definitely. It's going to be beautiful. So, so starting around 2 o'clock, but it's going to be a DJ. It's going to be entertainment, food. And again, just a beautiful day all in all, even though it's going to be hot. Uh, and hot you were just clothes, saying you know it's, it's going to get hot, so you got to watch what you're doing with those candles, Mark. Just watch what you're doing. Ooh. That's too right. hot you gotta today. Be, you got to be careful. That's right, careful. Tom. We, you know what, Tom? You know, Tom, <laughs> this Tom is, I think we need to end. I, I think we should end. Go to our website, foxbaltimore.com slash <laughs> Well, it is an honor flight like no other. Veterans revered for their dedication and service will embark on a journey of remembrance with an all expenses paid trip to the nation's capital. Our John Gonzalez joins us from the National Mall to tell us why this Juneteenth flight is unique. On this Juneteenth, 26 black veterans are getting a trip of a lifetime. The Honor Flight Network is hosting the first ever Juneteenth honor flight trip here in the nation's capital. One of the first stops will be the World War II Memorial. This special group is arriving at Reagan National Airport and some have been here before, but never like this. Take a look at some of these powerful images. They will visit memorials built, built in their honor. The emotional itinerary also includes the Vietnam Veterans Memorial and Arlington National Cemetery. Honor Flight Network board member John McCaskill tells me it is important to pay tribute to these unsung heroes, black veterans who selflessly served during America's most pivotal war periods. You know, since that first shot fired from Lexington Green, Massachusetts in 1775, you know, black folk have been defending this country. Uh, and so there were a few things that we did have to understand prior to. Uh, number one, the history of African Americans in U.S. military history. Uh, we had to really go out and not just say, oh, here's your invitation, but really compel them to come. Now, the group includes a 101-year-old veteran, three Purple Heart recipients, and one of whom is also a Bronze Star recipient, and four women veterans. Now, our cameras will be at DCA later this morning as that flight arrives from Atlanta, Georgia. We are looking forward to bringing you those special images as well. In Southwest Washington, John Gonzalez, 7 News.